So the next thing I want to do is find somewhat of a decorative font for uh, my header and I think also my footer. Um, I'm going to spare any kind of decorative font for my actual main content because, you know, don't don't let your this design decisions kind of distract uh, the main goal of your site, and that's to relay a message to your user. And if you kind of break out uh, a nice, you know, really decorative font on the main content where people could be reading, it could be distracting, and, and some fonts just aren't as as legible as others. So um, anyway, it's kind of a good idea to try to stay away from from doing that. So. I am going to be styling both my header up top and my footer down here with something, you know, something that breaks breaks beyond the uh, constraints of web safe fonts. And fortunately, CSS3 allows us, uh, it has a new uh, uh, attribute called uh, at font face attribute, I mean, rather, uh, yeah, attribute. And at font face basically allows you to import a set of fonts and then you just actually call those fonts in in your CSS just by actually whatever the name of the font is like you see here and then they they look good on the web so um, let's do just that now first thing you're gonna need to do is find a font you like that is fitting towards your design and I found mine uh, actually real easy here it is basically what I did is I googled free fonts space invaders and fortunately for me the first hit was exactly um, what I was looking for you could probably do free fonts let's see arcade classic like that and maybe yeah I'm sure you could find more you know more options than you than you care to explore, but uh, they're out there. I mean, there's a lot of places. A lot of people will go to Defonts or Font Space is a good one. Honestly, I've come to find that there's so many of these sites now. Uh, a lot of them using the same fonts anyway because they're out there. That a nice Google search will find you just what you need. So I found the Space Invaders font looks good to me, and I'm just going to give it a download. It's important to keep in mind um, when you're uh, doing this kind of stuff, especially for professional use, uh, that you check the uh, copyright of the uh, of the font because uh, I get to use these because it's for personal use, so it doesn't really matter. I'm, and it's educational use, which gives you a lot of leeway with uh, with stuff. But if you're if you're going to be doing this for a professional project and a client is paying you to do it. Don't mess around. Don't do something stupid like try to get a free font um, that's not really eligible for uh, for commercial use, and then you you know hook up your uh, client with some uh, illegal font, and who knows down the road they could uh, end up getting in trouble for it, and that's not gonna look too good for you. So here we go. I downloaded this uh, Freaky Fonts Cosmic Alien, and in here I have uh, the main type fo uh, font type that I need, which is a TTF, a true type font. Um, the reason I say this is the main style, uh, the main type that you want is, if you look at a lot of these uh, online engines that are going to actually end up creating fonts in a bunch of different formats for us, um, they require a TTF, a true type font. And what I'm talking about here is if you look at what it takes to actually implement at font face, uh, you need a couple of different types of fonts because different browsers aren't going to uh, use certain types. They're kind of similar to how HTML5 video is right now with uh, different browsers only supporting different formats. And as you see here, actually, um, in Chris's, uh, Chris's uh, notes, it tells you exactly what uh, browsers these are for. Modern browsers are going to accept this this web font format. Uh, Safari, Android, and iOS are going to only do true type, and so on and so forth. So we basically need to get our one font, our TTF, into all these different formats. Um, well, it's a pain in the butt, right? To 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 get all these set up. So 
fortunately, because it's a pain in the butt, other people have uh, made online utilities to help you kind of get this in a breeze. And one of the best utilities I've found on the web is one from Font Squirrel. If you go to fontsquirrel.com, you should see right off the main page is a app font face generator. And uh, here you actually get to upload a font, a true type font, and it's going to generate all the different formats you need as well as the code you could copy and paste into your page to get it set up. Awesome. That sounds great. Why don't we do just that? Um, and I'm just going to accept all the default uh, values over here, which is just this optimal. I don't necessarily need the expert because it gives me more options than I really want. The optimal takes care of all that stuff. Um, let me go to optimal. Click yes. My The fonts I'm uploading are legally eligible for web embedding. That's because I did check. I mean, I didn't check it for this video, but when I looked to download this font, I did check it, and one of its things is that you could use it for personal use only, and that's what I'm going to do. Um, mind you, if my personal use, if I was creating a website that's used to generate traffic to make money on my website, that's not, that's commercial use. So keep that in mind, even just because you're personally going to use it doesn't mean it's for personal use. Um, anyhow, once you have the font you want and you go to app font face, you can go add font and then just navigate to the font set that you created, uh, that you downloaded, and go and the TTF file. Click open, and then go ahead. There we go. It did it. Awesome. I probably did it before you even uh, saw it happen. So now I'm just going to download my kit. And uh, the next order of business is going to be to actually take the code that it gives me and the fonts and set them up for embedding.